So as a tissue engineer biologist, we have an array of technologies. We have from organoids, we have cell, we have microfluidics, we have 3D printing. And all of this happens in benches like the one you can see here. All of this happens in a planar structure. And we need to find ways to combine all this. But how, what inspired us to combine all this? Why inspired us to take something from the bench into the clinic? So I'm a frustrated uh, doctor, a physical, a medical doctor. I once reached a cancer department, and I found myself with patients that couldn't go through. Uh, there was no solution. We couldn't give them anymore. We run into little, like, young patients who had cancer that we, they had no more options. When they come to every single doctor all around the world, there was no solution. So I found myself frustrated, thinking, why am I curing 10 people a day? Why am I giving them a simple solution? And it's not even a full solution. We're actually giving them pills for the rest of their lives. They're going to have to take these pills forever. But I wanted to do something more for them. I wanted to actually cure them. I, did, I set up my mind to say, I'm going to build new drugs. I'm going to build better treatment for these patients that have faced a wall now. So how do we do that? How do we do it as tissue engineers? We have the cell. The cell is our main character here, is our, is our spotlight. These cells, as the human being, are individuals. They behave different. Each one has their own characteristic. But then we have populations of cells. As you can see here, we have a, a liver. This is what it looks to have a group of liver cells surrounding. They are great. They have helped us so much. We actually have developed drugs thanks to them. With them, we have developed drugs. But these drugs are limited. These drugs are not, we always think about uh, secondary effects when we have to take a drug. Why? Because these, these cells are in, in a plane. They are just sitting down, and we're giving them. We need to put them out there in the world. We need to remember that they have houses. And the fact that they, we don't put them in their houses has made that only one out of 10 drugs actually gets to market. And that what happens, then all the other nine drugs are going to be left behind. They're going to be without use forever and ever because pharmaceutical companies are expending so much money that they don't want to go back and spend more. So what we need to do is make better cells. We need to make these cells behave like they do in the human body. So this is their house. These are their buildings. These are their, these are their offices. This is where the cell lives. And we need to give them a home. If they are foster cells, just laying around there, they're not going to do something. If we have a human being that doesn't have a house, that doesn't have a community, the human being by itself needs a society, and we need to connect this society. So this is how we connect the cells. But let's talk about the human. The human body is, is amazing. Like an organ, like how the liver connects to the lung, how the lung connects to the heart, how the heart connects to the brain. And this is through the blood vessels. We need communication. We need a network here. And this is what we're trying to make. And this is what we have done. These are, we need to connect our engineered tissues with a network and a, 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 a design of roads that we have designed here. This is complicated. This is like, even sometimes I lose myself with all this communication. And this is what it looks like. So it looks even more complicated. Like Sometimes I'm like, what is that screen doing here? What is that pneumatic? What is this little tiny tube doing here? But this is what it takes to have a human being outside of a human being. This is how we're going to make better drugs. Let's break it apart. These are the cells. These are our individuals. These are gorgeous cells. By the way, these are cells that we have, come, we have got from the patient's skin and we have made into cardiac cells, into heart cells. These are cells that are going to beat. These are cells that are going to behave like the heart if we put them in the right environment. By putting them in the right environment, these are their houses. To your left, we can see these are the house of the heart. And to your right, you can see that's the building office of the liver. If we don't put the liver in this building, the liver is not going to behave like the liver. So if we can make them behave like they should behave in the human body, that's how we're going to be able to like, do better drugs, to predict these secondary effects. We're going to be able to cure real diseases. But we need to connect this, because I told you, people need to communicate yeah, just like the English need the tea from the Indian, they need the route. They need to have a communication route that brings that tea. We need to have the communication route that tells the heart 
look, there is a problem. We need to tell the brain, look, there is a problem. Look, we need to solve this. But if they don't communicate, they think, oh, we're solving it. So these are actually blood vessels made out of, they are engineered by blood vessel cells. They're alive. They're not just connecting. And this is how it looks. It's completely out of this world. This is a chip. This is the size of your credit card. This is this, inside of this system, there are cells. Inside of this system, there is dynamic fluidics going up and down and communicating the heart with the lung, the lung with the liver, the liver with the pancreas. And by this way, we can modify diseases. We can replicate diseases. This, is, by the way, is a model of a colon cancer. It looks harmless just by itself. And if we put a drug on it, it's going to die. But if we put a drug that communicates to the liver, to the heart, we can actually see what are the secondary effects. Which sure, we might kill the liver, the colon cancer, but then we're going to have heart problems. We're not solving. We're not curing anybody. We're taking away a disease, but we're giving them another one. So we, if we implement this, if we reroute these fluidics that we communicate in the right way, we're going to be able to get new drugs. We're going to be able to get better drugs and more drugs. We're going to be able to address foster drugs. We're going to be able to address rare diseases. But we're talking about the individual. And I, I, as I mentioned, the individual is the important factor here. Each one of us is different. Just as I might have allergies, somebody might not have allergies. So we need to make the new generation of organs on a chip. This new generation requires not only connectivity in its, in its 3D. As we have audiences on the top part, we have audiences on the bottom part, and each one of you interacts with me in a different way. So each one of these cells are going to interact, each one of these cancers is going to interact with the drug in a different way. This is a model of bladder cancer, a really important cancer that is more, it affects more smoking patients than it does lung cancer. But what, it, what, what does it matter? Because if it's right in the edge of the cancer, of the bladder, it's okay, it's curable. But if it goes deeper and deeper, it's not. It's more dangerous the deeper it goes. But if we have a system that is just plain and it's not in a 3D structure, how are we going to be able to treat the cancer? We can try to see the cancer, but we don't know how far into the deepness is. But now we have. We can know where it is. So what we do is we build a new generation of organ ownership. We need to be inspired to have a 3D system. But in order to have a 3D system that relies like the human body, we need to take away everything that is synthetic. No more tubing, no more mechanical valves. We need something organic. But the challenge here is how to connect something organic and make it universal, but at the same time individual. And just like the Lego block, we have individual blocks that if we put them together always in the same matter, we're going to get a universal model. We can replicate anywhere in the world a, a, a building. doesn't matter if we are in China or in the United States. If you have the instructions, we can build uh, at the same system, but with different blocks. They're not the same blocks that we have in China, the ones that we have in the United States. So what we have built is we, we have built a block. This block is organic. This block is the tissue. This is our tissue engineer block that has cells, that has microfluidics, that has connectivity, and that has a 3D environment. This is what it looks like inside. These are the blood vessels. This is how they connect. These are, the, these are right in their neighborhoods. These are their houses right next to their buildings, right next to their cities, building connected by the blood vessels and connected, communicating. And then these are the cells. The cells are happy. The importance of this picture here is that we have proven that we can put healthy tissue here and make it survive. And it's going to behave just like the human body. It's going to feel stress. It's going gonna, it's gonna to metabolize drugs. It's going to feel alcohol. If you give it a drink to this, this is going to make it happen. And then this is what it takes. This is what it takes to make a human body outside the human body. But as I told you, the important thing is a 3D environment for cancer. This is a hard picture to see. This is difficult to understand. But if you hang out with me, the bluer you see is the deeper into the, is the more into a blood vessel the tissue is. So the more into a blood vessel the tissue is, that means you're the closer to me. That means I can affect you faster. But some cancer, and that means you get the message faster, and then I can be an effective drug. But then we have cancers that go a little bit farther away from me. So it's harder for me to affect those cancers. So it's difficult, even though maybe I, I'm the same Julio, but it's difficult for me to reach farther away. And then this is the most dangerous one. This is a type of, a type of cancer that has grown, that is everywhere. And unless we have good communication, good 3D structures, I'm not going to be able to reach so far away. 
So what's the importance of this? We need to teach our physicians to stop shooting with a shotgun. Physicians nowadays, they are just shooting with a shotgun that is sure is, is hitting something. Just like in any season, in a, any hunting season, you're gonna kill something, but that doesn't mean you're gonna kill what you want. We need to teach them to say, shoot like a sniper. We need to teach them where they need to shoot, what they need to shoot, and that's the way we're gonna revolutionize the human body. We're gonna be able to make new drugs, personalized drugs, if we just teach them how to precisely hit the cancer, the disease, or any condition. And the only way we're gonna be able to do it is with doing more human-like tissues outside of the human body. Thank you very much.